morning. Uh, really excited to be here and really glad that uh, Neil and Rachel and Warren have invited me and, and Amelia to be a part of this panel. Uh, it's exciting to talk about our work uh, with the uh, Refugee Asylum International Operations Directorate. And uh, I think this is a really important conference, and, and I'm really glad to be here. I work in Washington at uh, USCIS headquarters, and I specifically oversee a research unit uh, that produces country conditions information on a broad range of issues. So it's not just LGBT, right? but um, we look at a uh, broad range of issues that uh, asylum cases uh, have to work through. So, uh, but this is an area which I spend a lot of time on. Uh, it's an area uh, of particular interest to me. Um, and so I'm really excited to be here. So what I'm going to try and do um, is not so much um, repeat uh, some of the things that have already been said and probably will be said afterwards. I'm really going to try and focus as much as I can on uh, the role of country conditions information uh, within uh, the adjudication process. So. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask, uh, but I'll try and, and go through this pretty quickly uh, to give you a sense of how we do our work. Okay, so uh, the Regional <coughs> Research Unit supports the needs of the uh, entire Refugee Asylum International Operations Directorate uh, within USCIS, and we have uh, approximately six researchers. Uh, myself, the Chief of the Research Unit, Andrew McIntosh, who covers Sub-Saharan Africa, David Tarr, covers Europe, CIS, Central Asia, including Afghanistan and Pakistan. Bill Corner, who handles East Asia, Juan Polkabak, the Middle East, but also specializes on transnational gangs. Cynthia Vega, who handles Latin America. Ryan Littlepage, who handles the Horn of Africa. We also employ three part-time uh, experts who uh, also assist us on special projects. So, um, you know, as you know, this is a, a global phenomenon. Uh, we really do try and uh, provide what's uh, known as fast and live or COI to uh, asylum adjudicators across the uh, country. Uh, and we try and give them a sense of the, uh, the, the broad variety of, of issues out there. Uh, some of these have already been uh, sort of spoken to, but here they are again. Some of the issues which we alert uh, our adjudicators to, extrajudicial killings, torture and ill treatment, sexual assault and rape, invasions of privacy, arbitrary detention, uh, denial of employment and education, blackmail and extortion. And uh, this is not an exhaustive list, so this is just something just to give you a, a sense of um, some of the issues that uh, that we do follow. Uh, when I showed this list around, one of the, uh, the uh, NGO uh, representatives that I, I looked to for, for guidance also suggested that we talk about um, uh, structural violence against LGBT people. Um, and he referred to this as essentially when the state really doesn't um, actively uh, you know, throw you in jail or persecute you, but obviously they've made it so difficult uh, for you to live your life and that you're essentially living in constant fear. Uh, there's no legal violation that's taken place or has been committed by the state, um, but uh, you essentially are, are, are hemmed in. Um, you uh, are are living in a, as he said, a, a constant state of fear and anxiety. And he refers to this as structural violence against LG, LGBT people. Uh, I have these pictures here. Uh, you probably, maybe some of you are familiar with them. Uh, the one on uh, your left is uh, the Rolling Stone article, which is from Uganda, in which uh, this newspaper, if you want to call it that, um, listed or pictured 100 Ugandans uh, who they identified as homosexual. I'm not even sure that all of them were homosexual, 
uh, but that's not a pyramid there. What happened is they um, outed these people, they uh, charged them as being homosexual, and it really created a very charged atmosphere within Uganda. And one of the persons that's pictured in this uh, uh, cover photo is uh, the activist David Cato, who was killed, I believe, earlier this year in Uganda. Picture on uh, the right is uh, a picture of two young men, I believe, who were accused of uh, rape or homosexuality. I'm not sure what the, the charge was. Um, but uh, what's so shocking about it is really the, the, the age of, of, of these uh, individuals. They look to be at least or no more than 16 or 17. Um, and this was uh, from Iran. And then this is just a little roundup. And again, this is not exhaustive. These are just some of the um, somewhat recent uh, events that have taken place in various uh, regions around the world. Um, here uh, in Africa, as it says, more than two thirds of African countries have laws criminalizing homosexual acts. Uh, here in Honduras and Latin America, gay rights activist was killed by unknown assailants in a drive-by attack. His death, was, his death was the 16th known murder in the Honduran LGBTI community since uh, last year's military coup. 